So a guy walks into a bar, and he gets a drink, and he's sitting there, and he's、um, just by himself. There's nobody around, and he hears this really kind voice, and the voice says, "Hey, that's a really nice shirt you're wearing." And、the guy kind of looks around, but there's nobody there. It's just a voice, so he just doesn't think too much of it. He goes back to kind of his thoughts, and all of a sudden the voice comes again, really kind voice. It says, "Boy, your parents must be really proud of you." Now he's thinking that there's something wrong. He's like, "Something's going on in my head." He's a little bit worried about himself. He looks around. There's still nobody there, so he just kind of shakes it off and, and gets back. And all of a sudden the voice is again, "You seem like a really nice guy." So finally, the guy looks around. Nobody's there. He sees the bartender down the bar, and so he says, "Bartender, what's that voice that I keep hearing?"、And、the bartender says, "I forgot the punchline. Forgot the punchline.、Um, don't you hate it when that happens?、Uh, there's somebody in our family. I won't tell you who it is." Who has a, a way of forgetting like the punchline or the end of a story, and it's really frustrating, right? Yeah. <laughs> They don't. You know the punchline to this? No. Hey, this is this is a rhetorical device. Just just go with me.、Um, so the Christian faith is one big story, and sometimes we as Christians. Forget the punchline, and we forget the end of the story, or we only tell part of the story and we miss the rest of it. We don't tell the story in all of its fullness. So here's the classic kind of outline of the Christian story, just so you know. We often talk about it as creation, fall, redemption. So creation, there's a God, the Father Almighty, Maker of all things. There is one singular source of everything that exists. We believe we confess that God made it all, and it and it was good. Then, of course, we know about the fall, that there is a rebellion that happened that has now tainted everything that God made good. It's like a perfectly pure glass of water that was a big clump of mud dropped in it. And now we live in this creation, and I don't have to prove to you that we're living in a fallen creation. But the whole scriptural narrative is about God redeeming, God bringing it back. Redemption is actually economic language. It's the language of commerce. It means to buy. Something back, and so all of Scripture is about God getting this thing He created back again, and He does it ultimately by having to pay a price. The price is blood, the blood of His Son, and so we get to redemption. But it's not really the end of the story, and sometimes Christians just stop here, stop in 33 A.D. as if that's the end of the story with the death and resurrection of Jesus. And we're done. And then the Christian life is simply kind of waiting to die,、uh, so that you can go be with this Jesus. And there's just sort of this、uh, sense that we wait, we die, we go to heaven, and that's that's it. But that's that's not the full story. The story is bigger than that. There's a punchline. Again, in classic Christianity, that fullness of the story is often referred to as. Restoration, sometimes consummation, the end, the completion of all things, it doesn't just end with redemption, but redemption is moving toward kind of a final punchline, when everything will be restored again. That there's a last day, there is an end to the story. The Christian worldview has a beginning and an end.、Um, it's different. We've talked about this before than some worldviews that are cyclical, like Hinduism, or I think many、uh, kind of pop. Religion in America is often kind of if you're just good, you kind of it gets back to you. There's karma. Christianity is a linear faith. There's a beginning and there's an end. It doesn't just go around and around forever. And the end is restoration. That on the last day, the King will return and once and for all put everything back good again, the way He intended it from the beginning. Eden restored again. That's the ultimate plan, and that's the end of all things. That's the fullness of the story, a story that doesn't stop short. We see it in our ancient creeds. It's part of what Christ, <coughs> excuse me, Christians have always said, and so we see in the creeds that He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I look for the resurrection of the dead. 
and the life of the world to come. The Bible is one big story, and there's an end to the story. And to stop short of that is to miss the punchline. So why is it important to speak the full story? Why is that important? Why does it matter? A few reasons. One of those reasons is it's true. And we want to be a people of the truth. We want to speak the whole truth, nothing short of it. So in 1 Corinthians 15, we're going to focus on that today. Just prior to this text, uh, Paul used the word if. If means like maybe, maybe not. So if, he says, Christ had not been raised from the dead, what he really says, if that's true, then your faith is in vain. You're as good as dead. You may as well just eat, drink, and be merry because nothing else matters if Christ has not been raised from the dead. So he repeats that word if. If Jesus wasn't risen from the dead, if, if, if. And then there's a turn in verse 20 where he says, but in fact. But in fact, it's true. Uh, Sometimes the Christian faith is called a myth. It's mythology. Uh, C.S. Lewis said, the Christian faith is the myth that is true. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. What does that mean? It means that He's the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. It's not just about Jesus, but what Jesus has done becomes good for all. First fruits, that means he's the pioneer. He's the first one to do it, and others, those who are in him, will follow. In other words, he's the blueprint. You want to know what God's plan is for your life? Look at Jesus. A death, and then a resurrection. It's the template. It's the blueprint. When I drive by... um, cemeteries, I often think of the people that I've uh, buried there or done committals for. Just drove past a sunset cemetery on Gravoy this morning, and I thought of somebody, and I can see their, their grave from the, from the road, and I always think of them because they're really close to the road. Uh, Jesus is the first fruits. What he did on the last day, that's what will happen to all who are in him. And I think of those in that cemetery, and I always kind of think, how will it be How will they come out? What will we look like to get our bodies back again? Well, that's a mystery, and we'll find out. But he's the first fruits of those fallen asleep. So in Christ shall all be made alive. What happened to Jesus is the picture of what will happen to all of creation on the last day. It's true. So why does speaking the full story matter? Because it's true. This is what we believe. It's, it's wild and crazy, and there's no other religion that's quite like it. And we want to speak the whole of it, the fullness of it, because we believe it's true. Why is it important to speak the full story? Here's another reason. We need purpose for the present. If you'd read this uh, verse with me, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, we read together. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Sometimes you wake up and you wonder, is it worth it? Or is my life just in vain? Maybe you've worked so hard for something or thought that you were someone and then there's a day and you wonder, does it make any difference on a Sunday morning after Thanksgiving and it's raining? How much difference does it make? It's hard to do God's will. It's hard to follow Christ. It means sacrifice at times. It means even suffering sometimes to follow Christ. It would be easier often to follow our own way. That's actually an easier path. And we wonder why. Why should I do this? Why should I devote myself to the man from Nazareth? The full story means that this all isn't meaningless, that it's not in vain. What does Paul say? Therefore, that's a transition word. Everything before that word 
uh, he summarizes in therefore. And what he had said before was all about the resurrection of Jesus, the setting right of all things, the restoration. Therefore, because of that, therefore, he says, be steadfast, immovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. Why? Knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Knowing the full story, knowing the end of all things, it gives you purpose for the present, especially when it's really hard to see it. Purpose for the present. To know that everything you do in Jesus' name matters. Every diaper changed, every prayer prayed, every hug that's given, it matters. Every work that you do in his name Every burden bared, every, every pain suffered, it's worth it. It's not in vain because you're a part of God's plan. In you and in his people, he's working out all things until the end. And so what you do really matters, and it's really important. It gives you purpose for the present. Why does the full story matter? It's true. It gives you purpose for the present. And it gives you hope beyond the horizon. If you'd read this with me again from 1 Corinthians 15, we read together. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father. After destroying every rule and every authority and power, that God may be all in all. Then comes the end. Then comes the end. And God restores all things. When Jesus puts death in a final chokehold and it's done, I can't wait. Conquers it once and for all. Restores again. Then comes the end, and he'll overwhelm all terrorists and tyrants. And then comes the end, and he'll, he'll do away with violence and sickness and disability and sadness. And then comes the end when he also does away with your own sinful complexes. That there are things that you look at yourself that you, you long to change. You long to change them, but you haven't been able to. You're stuck in them. Well, then comes the end, and he takes it, and he renews you once and for all to the person he's always dreamed for you to be. Then comes the end, that God may be all in all. The end of all cancer, the end of fighting, the end of lost children and hostages, and the end of tears, the end of depression, the end of worry and fear. And then comes the end, and it will all be over. The war will be over. And the Lamb will be on the throne. And you will look to Him. You will look to the Lamb, and when you see Him, you will say, Oh, He was right the whole time. Just in case you ever doubted or ever wondered, you'll look and you'll say, Oh, everything He said was true when he rules, and no one will question who he is or what he's done. And you will see him on the throne, and he will show you his hands, and they will still have scars in them because he chose that. He chose to retain the scars like trophies so that you will always know the severity of his love, and you will never question, you will never doubt how good he is. And then comes the end, and it will be an end and a beginning at the same time. It's important to tell the full story. It didn't end in 33 AD. There is a finality to it, and the full story is good for you. It ends well, because Jesus is there, and you are with him. It's important to tell the full story. So that joke, 
the guy at the bar, and he hears this really kind voice. And the voice says, um, boy, that's a really nice shirt that you're wearing. And boy, your parents must be proud of you. You seem like a really nice guy. And the guy goes to the bartender. He says, hey, what, what's that voice I'm hearing? And the bartender says, oh, it's the peanuts. They're complimentary. <laughs> yeah? Okay. I'm getting some love from this section right here. Okay. Not so much over here. Okay. Pause for applause, okay? <laughs> but I, I anticipated a little bit more, but that's okay. It's important to tell the full story, um, even when it's a bad joke. <laughs> the punchline matters, and it's important. The full story matters to you because it's true, because it gives you purpose for the present. You need purpose in the present moment because it gives you hope on the hori- uh, beyond the horizon. And sometimes the horizon seems really dark, but the full story tells you there's something beyond that. That's really important for you. Then comes the end. And we know this isn't, this isn't forever. This that we see right here it just doesn't kind of keep going. This is momentary. Someday it will all be over. But in the end, God is all in all, and he doesn't change. And the king will return, and the kingdom will come in its fullness. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And you will be restored in your fullness, body and soul. And at that moment, you will never, never have felt more at home than at that moment. And that's why it's important to tell the full story. Amen?